Hello and welcome to this lecture on the topic of three phase circuits, which is a subsection of power systems. We will start off this lecture by introducing three phase circuits. We will discuss some of the benefits of three phase circuits and describe why are they so widely used in transmission and distribution. Then we will dive into one of the two types of three phase circuits, which is Y network, and then we will look at delta network. Then we will review delta Y transformation in the form of impedance and source. And lastly, we will look at three phase power, specifically real power, reactive power, apparent power, and also power factor. To put it simply, three phase circuits refer to a system of generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity in which at least three conductors are involved. Virtually almost all electricity is generated and distributed as three phase power rather than single phase. And a balanced three phase system is the one in which the current and voltage of each phase is 120 degrees apart and there is equal loading on each phase. So the diagram on the right shows phase one, phase two and phase three. You see that they are 120 degrees apart and the amplitude of each of these phases is identical. So obviously there should be some inherent benefits of using three phase systems, uh, which explains why we preferred them over single phase systems for generation, transmission and distribution of electricity. So in terms of the benefits of three phase system, the first benefit is that although you increase, um, so when you increase the number of conductors from two wire to three fire, your uh, power transmission actually doubles. So you're going 2x over here in terms of power and you're only increasing from 2 to 3 it's a 1.5x increase. Okay, so um, dollar value benefits. Constant torque reduces vibration so you always have some voltage appearing. Okay, so there's the first peak button between the peaks you can see that there's some voltage appearing as well. So that reduces the vi vibration. Three phase machines use less material for same power rating. So again, uh, economic reason. And three phase machines start more easily than uh, single phase machines. So you can say reliability slash uh, simplification of design, all of which actually translates into dollar. And the cost of three phase system is less than single phase system. Uh, we end up using uh, fewer amount of conductors and uh, they are lower losses in a three phase systems. So that's why virtually everywhere, um, as I mentioned, generation, transmission and distribution of electric power is done in uh, three phase circuits as opposed to single phase circuits. So within the three phase systems, uh, we have two types of arrangements. The first one is a Y network and the second one is Delta network. We will explore each one of them in detail. And in terms of uh, transmission and distribution voltages, I believe you would know that high voltages are generally reserved for transmission, especially for longer distances. So we are talking about 115 kV, 230 kV and 500 kV and above. There's also um, high voltage DC transmission, but that's not really um, an AC system, but that can go upwards of 800 kV and extra high voltages of 1000 kV plus. So there are some systems which interconnect continents or big countries or huge distances. Um, you may even see voltages upwards of 1000 kV. And then for distribution, this is typically done at low voltage and medium voltage depending on at what point in the power system you are. So 15 kV is pretty standard, 5 kV is pretty standard and residential uh, voltage distribution is typically done at 480 volt and 600 volts. Y network. So Y arrangement is one of the two arrangements for uh, three phase circuits. And in the Y arrangement, the three phase Y source is configured um, such that it has three voltage sources that are connected to a neutral. So it literally looks um, like Y, like the letter Y. Okay, and here's the example. Um, so you have phase, if I can call this as A, 
B and C phases A, B and C are arranged um, such that they share a common point, which is the neutral. And then between each phases, so between B and C, you have line voltage BC, VBC. Uh, between A and B, you have line voltage A and B. And between A and C, you have A and C. And loads can also be connected in Y network uh, using three or four wires. When we use three wires, we basically don't bring out the neutral. But if you end up using four wires, then you basically bring out the neutral. So that becomes a four wire system and that allows you to feed single phase loads as well. So depending on where exactly you are in the power system network, you may or may not want to bring out the neutral and also depends what type of grounding you are doing. Okay, if you're doing resistance grounding, then neutral is typically not brought out. If you have a solidly grounded system um, at, at low voltage, uh, for low voltage applications, typically neutral is brought out. But more and more, um, the preference it seems is that uh, neutral is derived as close to the loads as possible. So you might introduce, for example, if you have MCC feeding a bunch of motors and then you have utility panels, then sometimes um, the MCC would still stay as a three wire system, but downstream of the MCC, you will introduce a dry type um, distribution transformer and you will derive a neutral from the distribution transformer, which will be feeding a distribution panel, a lighting panel, um, and so on and so forth. So rather than bringing in uh, four wires from the service, uh, you basically generate neutral close to the load. Let us now take a look at mathematical equations for my network. First and foremost is your voltage. Remember that line voltage is always greater than the phase voltage in my network by a factor of square root three, which is 1.732 approximately. Okay. And line current is the same as the phase current. So these are two distinguishing factors um, of uh, features of Y network, that your line current is equal to phase current and your line voltage is equal to uh, square root three times uh, the phase voltage. Okay, so in terms of line current, it's very easy to see because the phase, uh, the phase current that is leaving the phase actually ends up being the line current. Okay, so it's no rocket science over here, your line current is equal to phase current. Whereas in the case of uh, line voltage, we are basically, so we call this as phase A, phase B and phase C. So line voltage is VBC in this case, for example, right? So you're measuring voltage between phase B and phase C. So in this case, this voltage is greater than the voltage between phase B and the neutral. So if I were to bring out the neutral and if I was to me measure the voltage between uh, B and N, then that would be less than VBC. Okay. Another feature of uh, Y network is that your line voltage actually leads the phase voltage by 30 degrees. So a lot of students just try and remember I, um, the magnitude relationships, okay, that line voltage is greater than uh, phase voltage by 1.732 and line current is the same as phase current and they think that's it. Remember that when we are dealing with three phase networks, um, that your phase currents, uh, your, your fa uh, phase angles are equally important, okay, because if you ignore this, if you ignore the fact that the line voltage leads the phase voltage by 30 degree and you try and solve a question, depending on how easy or difficult the question is or what level of detail the question is asking, then just by skipping this step or overlooking this detail, you will actually get a wrong answer. And chances are that wrong answer will be one of the options that is presented. So don't overlook this. Now in terms of vector, now that we understand the phase current is equal to line current and line voltage is greater than phase voltage by 1.732. In terms of vector, okay, this diagram over here. So you have your phase A along the X axis as your baseline, okay, at angle zero. So between and E represents the voltage. So you can see that you have um, 
between voltages A and C, you have 120 degrees. Between C and B, you have 120 degrees. And between B and A, you have 120 degrees, right? So 120 degrees apart, okay? Now, you see, you can notice that EAB, which is the phase voltage between A and B, actually leads voltage, um, phase voltage AN, okay, by 30 degrees. See, so over here, we are leading the phase voltage, again, the phase voltage leads, uh, sorry, the line voltage leads the phase voltage by 30 degrees. So AB is your phase voltage between A and B, and it is leading, um, so the A and B is the line voltage between A and B, and it is leading the phase voltage VAN, which is between A and neutral by 30 degrees. Another observation is that this arrow, all of these blue arrows, which represent the line voltages, are greater in length as compared to your phase voltages, and they are exactly 1.732 times larger than the phase voltages, okay? So your line voltage is greater than your um, phase voltage or line to line voltage is greater than line to neutral voltage is the same thing. And your line current is the same as the phase current and your line voltages lead the phase voltages by 30 degrees. Now there's mathematical derivation for all of these, okay? Um, mathematical derivation explaining the line voltage is equal to 1.732 times uh, the phase voltage and line current is equal to phase current. I'll try and include some links at the end of the lecture if you want to go through that uh, derivation or maybe add some notes there. And it will also show that the line voltage leads the phase voltage by 30 degrees. Here's a practice problem for you. We have a balanced three phase Y connected load with a phase impedance of this and it is connected to a positive sequence balanced three phase Y connected source with uh, uh, line to neutral voltage of 120 uh, volts with a 30 degree uh, phase. So we are being asked to calculate the phase current. Uh, don't worry about the positive sequence over here because um, that is the general nature of the system when it is balanced and operating fine. And uh, it is a concept that we discuss in quite a bit of detail in the PE power exam preparation course. Um, but other than that, what you have to focus on is the impedance that's provided to you, the fact that your load is Y connected and the source is also Y connected. And you are given the phase voltage and you're being asked to calculate the phase current. In a balanced three phase Y network, phase current can be simply calculated as IAN is equal to VAN divided by Z phase, okay? So if I were to draw this out, and I always recommend uh, for three phase systems at least to draw out um, the network because it makes uh, things a lot easier to understand and to follow, okay? So you have, this is pretty simple because you have a Y source and it is a Y load, okay? And in terms of the Y source, you actually have VAN that is provided to you and you are being asked to calculate IAN, which is equal to unknown, okay? And your Z phase, Z phase is identical for all of these and Z phase is actually provided as well. So the beauty of Y network and a lot of times the Y network is much more easier to solve as compared to Delta network. That's why we will also discuss um, y delta transformation but in Y network if you have a Y connected source and Y connected uh, load then it simply becomes Ohm's law because your VAN is equal to IAN times Z phase so your IAN becomes VAN divided by Z phase. So your VAN was given as 120 volts with a phase angle of 30 degrees your Z phase is equal to 20 plus 5 J ohm uh, which is 20.6 and phase angle of 14 degrees and IAN is simply VAN divided by Z phase 
which ends up being 5.28 and 16 degrees. So even in this type of problem, students can make a mistake. Um, as I mentioned before, they tend to ignore for whatever reason, they tend to ignore the phase angles. And um, sometimes because uh, even in the vector diagram that we saw before, uh, you notice that your EAN, which was VAN, was along the x-axis and the angle is basically zero, right? They believe that the 30 degree only applies to um, the phase voltages, but then this can shift as well, right? Your phase angle, if that becomes 30 degrees, if because it will rotate, so if that when that becomes 30 degrees, you still have an additional 30 degree phase shift between your line voltages, right? Line voltage and your um, phase voltages. So just make sure that you give due attention to these phase angles because in some of the problems um, they are the deal breaker because as I mentioned you may end up seeing two answers and the only difference between the two answers would be the phase angle. Delta network. A three phase delta source configuration has three voltage sources connected in series with each other to form a closed circuit. Okay. So that actually sh takes the sh uh, shape of a triangle or a delta, okay? And in this case, for example, you can see that if you can call this as A, B, and C, then both ends of the source are connected to um, the other two sources, okay? C, you, you can observe that you have um, one end connected to A and one end connected to B, for B, you have one end connected to A and one end connected to C. And for A, you have one end connected to B and the other end connected to C. And loads can also be connected in a delta network using uh, three wires only as there is no neutral. So a standard delta configuration will have no neutral. You can add a neutral um, to a delta network. It's typically done for grounding purposes by making a connection to any of the ends um, with the with the ground, so that would be a del uh, grounded delta network. But a standard delta network does not have a physical ground, as opposed to a wire network where you basically can take the neutral and ground it through a resistance, or solidly ground it, or even leave it floating. So, uh, in the case of a delta network, the neutral is not available right away. So this is your delta network. Again, it's um, the difference is uh, in the connection as opposed to Y, and it's on not only just connection, it's not only just visual um, arrangement. Um, we will see that Delta Network has some distinct features when compared to Y Network because of these different connections. Let us now take a look at mathematical equations for the Delta Network. The first thing that is very obvious is that your line voltage in a delta network is equal to your phase voltage. V line is equal to phase voltage because you can see here in this diagram that your phase voltage is appearing across the same two nodes basically where your line voltage is appearing, right? So these points are the same, whether you take them across the phase or whether you take them across the lines, okay? you connect it across the phase or the line. So if a voltmeter is connected across the phase, that will be the same as connecting it across the line and it will give you the same reading. So your phase voltage is equal to your line voltage. The difference is in the current, okay? In the case of a delta network, your line current that is flowing out of the phases here, right? Um, this line current is equal to square root three times the phase current. Now phase current is the current that only flows through the phase, through each of these phases. But when it becomes a line current, you can see that it sums up with the other phase, right? And then there are phase angles that you have to take into consideration. That's why it's not two times the phase current, right? Because of the 120 degree phase shifts, um, it is equal to 1.73 times the phase current. Now, if you remember in the Y network, you had the voltage across the two phases being um, square root three 
uh, the line to line voltage was square root three times a phase and that's because we were measuring across two phases um, in this case your line current is square root three times i phase now for some reason students tend to remember the fact that the line voltage leads the phase voltage by 30 degrees but somehow they they tend to forget um, an equally important phase angle relationship between the line current and the phase current which is that your line current lags the phase current by 30 degrees in a delta network okay and we can see that visually by looking at the vector diagram so in the vac vector diagram you have uh, IBA which is your phase current between phases B and A okay so if I can call this A and B and C so your IBA is basically this current okay and it lags the line current by 30 degrees so this is phase A line current IAA and it lags the line current by 30 degrees and you can see that the line current arrow for the line current in the blue turquoise color is actually uh, greater than the phase current in length and this difference is 1.73 times 1.732 times okay so it can be confusing to remember the delta and uh, delta network equations and y network equations but when you draw it out it will make perfect sense okay because you can see that the line voltage is equal to the phase voltage and the line current is being summed up as uh, sum of uh, two phase currents so the relationship is square root three times the phase current and the line current lags the phase current by 30 degrees this is not so obvious but once you do the derivation it will be clear so these are the key uh, equations uh, governing the delta network and you can see that by just simply connecting the phases in a different way we are able to actually come up with altogether different uh, relationships between voltages and uh, currents as i mentioned earlier in the lecture generally speaking y networks are much easier to solve as compared to delta networks they are exceptions so if you have a delta connected source uh, sorry delta connected load and you want to convert that impedance into a y impedance then all you have to do is to divide the delta uh, impedance so this is phase per phase so you divide the z, z delta uh, per phase by 3 and that becomes your y impedance so you have the delta impedance okay in each of these phases assuming that it's balanced then what you'll do is that to transform it into a y impedance this will be one third of the delta okay each phase will be one third of the delta impedance it's as simple as that and when it comes to source transformation if you have a y connect delta connected source and you want to transform it into a y connected source uh, it's pretty simple because if you remember your phase voltage and the line voltage in delta are identical so if you want to establish what the phase voltage of the y network is you will simply divide the phase voltage or the line voltage of the delta so in delta line and phases are the same divided by square root 3 okay and for phase angle uh, adjustment you will have to uh, make sure that you introduce this factor of square root 3 because the phase voltage in delta lags the line voltage by square root 3 and then you can transform the source from a delta source to a y source here is a practice problem for you on the topic of delta y transformation we are being asked to calculate the line current ia which is provided by a balanced three phase y connected source okay so the source is y connected and the phase voltage is this and it is feeding a delta connected load okay so this is where it becomes interesting because you have a y connected source and a delta connected load so they've also provided you i'm also providing you the z phase which is 10 plus 2j ohms and the entire system is balanced and given these details you have to find the line current 
So for three phase systems, as I mentioned, I always like to draw out uh, the network. So this is how the network looks like at the moment. Okay. Um, this is how the network looks like. I know it's a pretty rough sketch, but you, your source is Y and your load is Delta. Okay. And we are provided V A N and we are provided Z Delta per phase. Okay, and we have to calculate this current, I A N. Now, you cannot simply apply Ohm's law on this because for Ohm's law, you have to have a Y connected source and a Y connected load. So the obvious thing is that we are going to do a source trans uh, transformation. You are given a Z delta. So we know that Z delta is equal to three times Z Y or Z Y is equal to Z delta divided by three. And when you do that, you find that your ZY per phase is equal to 3.4 with a phase angle of 11.3. Now, your diagram looks like this. Okay, pretty neat and clean. And um, you have a source, which is Y, and a load, which is Y. Now you can make use of this ZY per phase and ZVAN to calculate IAN using Ohm's law. So the final step is to simply make use of the Ohm's law because we have a Y connected source and a Y connected load. Your IAN is equal to VAN divided by ZY. So IAN ends up being 35.3 with a phase angle of minus 11.3 degrees. And this is amps. Okay, so without doing this source transformation, the problem would have been much more difficult. We would have had to uh, go through uh, more complicated uh, mathematical equations and take make use of the phase angles and whatnot. So it's easiest, as I mentioned, to transform the load and the source into a Y network because then you can simply make use of the Ohm's law. And there's a condition here as well that your system has to be balanced and that's what the assumption is. So in the problem statement, they tell you that the system is balanced, right? And that's why you can apply Ohm's law. Let us now take a look at another very important concept in three phase circuits, which is three phase power. In the earlier lecture, we've already looked at single phase circuits and we will start our discussion with real power. So as I mentioned, real power is actually indicated by P, reactive power by Q and apparent power by S. So single phase real power is equal to V phase times I phase times cosine theta. Okay, and we also looked at it in terms of Vmax and IRMS and VRMS in the earlier lecture. Uh, so this can also be expressed as I square times R or V square divided by R. In terms of three phase power, we have P three phase, which is simply equal to three times P single phase. Okay, so P single phase, you would have three times V phase times I phase. So as you can see over here, single phase power is equal to V phase times I phase times cosine theta. So you can simply multiply three times V phase I phase cosine theta. That's expressed in the form of phase um, quantities. Now, alternatively, you can also express it as line uh, in terms of line quantities, and uh, that will translate into square root three times V line times I line times cosine theta. So all of these formulas are provided in NCSFE reference handbook, and they are applicable for both delta and Y networks. Reactive power is almost identical. The only difference is that we are dealing with uh, reactive impedance and we have uh, sine theta, okay? So single phase reactive power is equal to V phase times I phase times sine theta, okay? And we can make use of uh, I square X and V square divided by X for calculation of reactive power as well. And same thing for three phase reactive power. It is three times single phase reactive power which is three times V phase I phase times sine theta. And in terms of line voltages and line current, it becomes square root three times V line to line, I line sine theta. And this is applicable to both delta as well as your Y networks. And last but not the least is apparent power. And this is where a lot of students make mistake, okay? 
they think that there's only one type of power which is real power but actually what they end up calculating is apparent power they somehow uh, in the calculation of real power they somehow miss the power factor and they think that okay single phase power just multiply voltage with current what you end up getting is apparent power and if you're lucky if the power factor is one then you wouldn't even know the difference right but if the power factor is anything other than one then your answer will be incorrect okay so just keep in mind when you're simply multiplying a voltage by current you are actually calculating apparent power okay apparent power includes both the real power and the reactive power okay so three phase apparent power is simply three times single phase apparent power and that can be expressed as square root three times v line to line times i line <clears throat> And power factor is simply the ratio of your real power to apparent power. If you're dealing with single phase systems, that becomes P single phase divided by S single phase. If you're dealing with uh, three phase systems, it becomes P three, uh, three phase divided by S three phase. And that is your cosine of theta. And uh, if you are to, if you were to calculate the magnitude, so S uh, square is equal to P square plus Q square. And S is equal to p plus p square plus q square square root of p square plus q square so in this lecture we introduce three phase circuits which is the next logical progression after a single phase circuit most of our residential and i would say commercial wiring is actually single phase but when you get to distribution and transmission it is exclusively three phase as I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, we deal with very high voltages, okay? And three-phase circuits have their inherent advantages. The two major types of configurations that we look at when it comes to three-phase circuits are the Y network and the delta network. And CSFE reference handbook contains details regarding the formulas for each one of them. And we looked at um, the configuration, both the mathematical approach and also the three-phase connections in the Y and delta network. Um, as I mentioned, generally speaking, it is much easier to uh, analyze a circuit in a Y configuration, and that's why a lot of times uh, you would want to convert a delta system into a Y system, and then for that we have impedance transformation. And you also have to be very careful with the line current and the um, um, phase current, the phase voltage and the line voltage, because um, they change between delta and Y networks. And finally, we took a look at three-phase power, both the, uh, the real power, the reactive power, as well as the apparent power. For further practice, I would recommend you to check out the quiz and also consider the study guide and practice exams. Thank you. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 plus lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCS FE electrical and computer exam specification. You will also find numerous quizzes and mini exams in this course which will help you in getting additional practice. I have included a link in the description of this YouTube video for a free FE electrical and computer exam preparation webinar. All you need to do is to click the link and sign up. One last thing. Here's a small trailer of Study for FE's on-demand FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. Thanks for watching.